Okay, I was asked if I could do some North African points, some small ones, and I was looking those up, and it appears that they were made a lot of times from colorful translucent chirts. So just by coincidence, that is the type of material that I have the least amount of. <laughs> Luckily, I don't need much of it. So, let's see what I can do. I don't know, that'd be, that's a little bit too risky. I don't know if I can get anything out of that piece, so I'm not even going to attempt that one. Trying to get a flake that I can make something out of. It doesn't need to be very big. Looks like I'll just have to use this whole piece. Uh, this is probably a piece of heat treated coral. Been a while since I worked this type of material. All right. I bet you I could take this to the belt sander and get rid of that cortex. It's just a very weak, well, it's not that weak, it's a limestone. Probably make short work of that on the sander. I'll be right back. Okay, so that was that was all right. Um, it's a great way to dull my new sanding belt. Oh well, good thing they come in packs of two, <laughs> right? I can never keep those sanding belts sharp. Or we always gotta put something on them to dull them. Let's see here. And it should be much better. Yeah, not too bad. did see a few sparks fly so I knew I was getting close to the chert I don't know, this might be raw chert certainly acting that way thing these arrowheads are not complicated I 
and I was trying to get dimensions and I saw some some online that had a scales next to them so I tried to get an average and it looks like they're usually one centimeter by two centimeter or a centimeter and a half long but I'm going to do the one centimeter wide by two centimeters long The uh, two to one proportion is looks pretty good on an arrowhead. And some of them did have that proportion. Yeah, this is definitely raw. They were probably making these points from flakes taken off of nodules and not doing what I'm doing. Well, since I'm limited on this stuff, I'm going to have to work with this. to be able to do what I did with the obsidian with the one flake one point type strategy yeah, I haven't been pressure flaking on raw stone well maybe a few pieces we'll see how it goes this time I'm going to shape I'm going to do the final shaping with pressure. Once I get this thinned down. Now, could I thin this down with abo tools? I don't know. Maybe. Probably not without damaging my indirect percussion flaker beyond repair so that I have to make another one it's not good when you have a ratio of one tool to one point you know make a new tool for each point you do you want to you want to be able to make dozens of points from the same tool before it wears out just the feel of this stuff seems like I would damage that indirect percussion flake are pretty good. I just slipped off the platform there. Sometimes I get people asking me to make arrowheads from their material and they give me a material like this and ask me to do a nice cahokia with very narrow notches and very thin and it's raw stuff like this and uh, I've given it my best shot in the past sometimes it doesn't work out and that's what's that's what's embarrassing because it doesn't look like it's hard to nap. I don't think. And they've tried to nap it and they can't do anything with it. But they say, oh, well, probably uh, a napper who's been doing it for a while should have no problem. When, uh, in fact, the material is extremely difficult to nap for anybody. You can't always get the real thin arrowheads with very narrow notches with difficult material.
And some might say, well, doesn't that mean that the stone is determining the shape? Well, it's determining the fine details, yes. Not the overall shape. I can still make a Cahokia with Abo tools from this piece, but it's going to look pretty crude. It's still going to look like a Cahokia, though. People look at it and say, hmm, uh, he made me a field grade type. I didn't want a field grade. What a nice, pretty thin one. Oh well. <laughs> you got to understand that these things are difficult for anybody. All right. But anyway, I choose I chose this out of my my stack. I'm not complaining about this piece. Just talking about stuff that happens. Now, is that why some points are crude, that look crude out in the field when you find them? And, and you find a few nice specimens, and then you find a bunch of these crude field grade, so-called, points. Is that what? Is that the reason? Because some of them are raw, some of them are heat-treated, or of higher quality flints and stuff? I think it's, yes, that's, a, that's one reason, but there's also a difference in... Napping skill, difference in napping tools. A difference in the time that you have. Uh, the amount of material you have to practice on. Uh, you can get the hang of really difficult materials. Find little tricks that you can use. For example, you know, to just you could, you might be able to use a a wooden billet to knock off really thin flakes that you can just nap around the edges and get some nice delicate looking points. That kind of thing, or you know, just straight out get used to napping the hard material or the difficult material. So there's different variables. But yeah, a lot of these field grade points, I think, are difficult material. Or expedient. Just something to whip up real quick. You're only going to go on a a hunt for uh, rabbits or whatever, rodents, maybe fish points, fishing points, shoot at fish and you're going to lose a bunch of them in the water. So you don't want to spend too much time or all your best material on that stuff. spend a good amount of time fishing with uh, arrows that I've made shooting mainly carp so they like to hang out near the surface sometimes they'll just float on the surface and kind of drift by uh, you know within 10 yards of the shore just kind of sitting there in a current if there is a current and uh, you can shoot them broadside without having to worry about the the water distorting the the image so that you you know you don't have to shoot under the fish or something whatever you can just shoot directly at the fish if he's right near the surface anyway i've shot quite a few carp that way 
And I've lost a few arrows doing it. I was thinking about that the other day. Uh, back when I was shooting those fish, the the fastest kills were the ones that hit the spine. If I was able to penetrate the spine, the fish was just motionless. I could just reel it in. And at that time, I had some string attached to the to the back of the arrow. I I I, I attached the string to the back of the arrow. Um, I don't have a reel. Oh, at that time, I didn't have a reel in front. Anyway, I would just reel it in by hand. And uh, carp are excellent fighters. So if you don't have a, a good barb on your arrow, that carp is going to rip rip itself off the arrow. Anyway, reeling them in. And if, you, if I had hit them on the spine, you just reel them in and bring them up on shore. No fight, no nothing. Easy, easy. And I was thinking the other day, what's the best arrowhead for that kind of a shot? And I was thinking the transverse arrowhead is is perfect for that. You know, chisel tip, transverse like this with a flat tip. It, sh it would just cut the spine of the fish. And I'm, I was thinking, hmm, that's interesting. I need to try that one of these days. When I go back up north, I was in Indiana when I was hunting carp that way. Anyway, you want to you want a really tough arrowhead to hit that bone, right? You don't want a delicate arrowhead hitting the spine of a big old 15 pound carp. You want something tough. I was using uh, steel nails and hammering steel nails to make the arrowheads. But I, I made them, I made the arrowhead with a hook on it or a long barb on one side, which also is kind of like some of the European types. But I can't see making one of those barbed, long barbed arrowheads for fish with a stone point. Because that, that barb's going to snap right off. It might be a ceremonial uh, f fishing point that normally would be made out of bone or something. And I just made a stone fishing point as a mortuary gift or something. Buried it with the, the deceased. But yeah, that's I made a barb arrowhead, one really long barb on one side when I was hunting those carp. I started out with just bending a big old nail in a U shape and then hammering it flat so that the, the hammered flat part could be sharpened to, to a point and I'd have a you know a rounded thick part for the shaft and a rounded thick part that I would just file down to a nice sharp barb. All right. And that's that was before I even saw those European style arrowheads. This was a long time ago. I guess it's 20 years ago now. Tough stuff. Ooh. 
this pressure flicking okay. I just don't think I can thin it down with pressure, so I'm using percussion. Let's see. Oops. Yeah, when it's when it starts doing that, I'm reaching the limits of the material. And luckily, these arrowheads from North Africa are, are kind of thick. Maybe for the same reason. Still much wider than, yeah, much wider than one centimeter. I got plenty of room and much longer than two centimeters. So, still plenty of room. Just whittling it down. Actually, I didn't think I had that much room, but it's good to know. less stressful when you get plenty of room. strange grinding such a small point with that much grinding yeah it works though now I picked up this flake or this little chunk from napping waste from a napping. In case you're wondering where I got it, I get a lot of my stuff from napping's from the waste flakes. This might be Coastal Plains chert. Percussion, this little tiny bitty piece. Not that I haven't done it before, I've done indirect percussion on very small points, but this one's going to be trying to jump out of my hands because it's so tough. And if I had the glove on, I couldn't, I won't be able to feel how it's doing. Slipping right now. Yeah. Slipping off the edge. But it's not shocking the piece. I don't feel a lot of tugging. I saw a spark there. It's 
nice and tough if there's some sparks flying. Use a little bit of pressure to seat that tip, but it's not working. Should I have grounded down less? Maybe. But you have to ride that fine line. Sometimes if you don't grind it enough, it just crushes and doesn't go anywhere. Better to grind it and have it go, have it not do anything than not grind it and crush it and then not be, be able to recover from step fracturing. I don't know. Not sure. I can probably finish this with pressure. I think I often say the hardest thing in flit napping is to thin a thin point. To thin down a point that's already thin. Well, there's another one too I just realized. Thinning down a small point of very tough material. Now, if you guys are working flakes of extremely tough material and you're ignoring the fact that, oh, it's okay because it's just a small point, you're working on something that is one of the hardest things in flint napping. Again, trying to do miracles with a very hard stone on a small point. Because it, it moves a lot if you don't keep a lot of good pressure. And my fingers are all squishy, and my hand, my my hands in general are squishy. Back when I was heavier, my hands were all puffy and squishy. It was even worse. Now I got a little bit of bone to back it up. <laughs> Before it was all just swollen and. Squishy, like trying to nap with two layers of gloves. I don't know what made me think of that. So I've got to, well, I don't know. I don't have to thin it down to fit the foreshaft if I'm just going to make some reproductions of those little North African arrowheads. It'd be nice if it fit the foreshaft, but I got a pretty thin standard there. It's not even close. thicker one but I think these arrows that these were mounted on were not thick
probably little delicate arrows too. Not to uh, never know, I guess. I don't know if they have but they have Egyptian artifacts from back in the day when North Africa was not so dry. But it's still relatively recent history. So most of the desert was pretty bad. Yeah, I didn't grind the edge and I get a big old step fracture. Gee, that never happens. See if we can get another one on this side. So I didn't grind it that much either. Almost 30 minutes on this little bitty point. I could, I could hit this with this piece of steel, but I'm afraid I'm going to create a step fracture I can't recover from. I'm already not probably not able to recover from this cortex that's still on here. I would have to, have to take the tip down. Let's see. Still much wider than one centimeter. If I take the tip, I mean, if I take the base off, I could send up some thinning flakes, maybe get rid of that cortex. Okay. A big old step fracture there anyway. Might as well just snap right up to it. Try to take it away at the same time I'm thinning it. Gotta keep an eye on that width. At this stage, it can get very small very fast. It's almost too small for me to do percussion on there. I'm going to try a percussion, a couple of percussion flakes. See what happens. I don't have to worry too much about overshots on this or reverse hinges on this because it's extremely tough material. I think you can handle it. All right, I'm gonna try steel on steel this time. Maybe get some more concentrated force. Uh, yeah, that worked pretty good. All righty. Didn't work for the second shot, though. I don't know 
know if I can get re get it ready for another try. There's no pushing off of those step fractures. Sometimes you can push a flake off the step fracture, but not on this one. All right, let's see. It's getting very, 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 very tiny. Steel on steel, or steel on iron is working good, working well. Probably should have done that the whole time. Done it the whole time. All right, let's see. We can break it and then have to delete the video. Then you miss all the awesome commentary. <laughs> you won't hear my fish tail. Yeah, it didn't go anywhere. I'm getting some flakes, but they're not going anywhere You're supposed to be a nice big old flute what well, seems to be the problem all right let's see tape measure yeah we're getting pretty close yep okay so i think i can take it down enough to skim some flakes across okay I didn't think it was getting that dull that fast. Now that I see how small this is, I think I got a lot of material I could use for these little bitty arrowheads. I skipped over some flakes in my flake stash that I thought might have been too tiny. But probably not. Now you can do this with agate, with raw agate, if you get some, exactly what I'm doing. It naps pretty much like this too. What was it, raw agate slabs? Sometimes you can get cheap ones from Indonesia or something, right? I keep getting Facebook requests, friend requests. From guys that sell slabs of agate. I'm very tempted just to buy a big shipment of it when I save up some money. And by big, I mean, you know, maybe $100 or so. Nothing too major. 
I don't want to risk buying too many and then have it not be any good for napping. I don't have any lapidary equipment, so I won't be able to make little pendants or anything out of it. But, you know, it, it's worth a try. Maybe they can, some of it can be heat treated. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's from Indonesia where there's a lot of uh, agate slabs being exported. probably going to be a resource in the future for nappers as everything else starts to dry up it's already starting to dry up as far as cheap stuff goes you can always get the expensive stuff I know, I can just grind that off, right? Let's see. Should have left some on there so you could hold on to it. Should have thought of this sooner. Had to try the napping. Try to remove it with a napping technique. try to push off some of those steps but I can't get a can't get a backing on it yeah there's no way I can generate enough pressure there that way Last chance on pressure flaking across the surface. I can already feel it rocking. Let's see. I'm gonna try something here. No, I need something rigid to hold the back end so it doesn't pivot. feels like it might work if I can just get it to stay still yeah let's see yeah, it wasn't too bad took out a big old dished out flake I'm going to need a notch there anyway so I need one on the other side too so I might just prep the other side or not That 
Was there evidence of some some arrowheads flattened this way? Why, yes. Funny you should ask. There is evidence of flattening on napped points by rubbing, right? Or however they used to do it. Abrading on another stone. Especially, uh, I've seen some Chinese arrowheads like that. Okay, so this is a little bit more than a little bit more than a centimeter. A bit more than two centimeters. I don't know if it's even focusing correctly. Uh, I could try a little bit more since I've got some room. Might as well, right? It's a napping video. An out of focus napping video. But some of you guys aren't even watching. No, you're not. Just little background noises. Better than listening to traffic, I guess. You can always roll the window down and listen to traffic to go to sleep. I remember doing that. Of course, you can't do that on the street with a lot of trucks. Or a lot of motorcycles. Back in my old neighborhood, we didn't have many motorcycles. Back in the day. Not on our street anyway. Luckily. I need that, where is that? to keep it rigid for these pressure flakes. Oh, almost. But I think it's good enough. I think I got enough of that cortex off. I'm just going to shape the point and hope it's right. Still a little bit big. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I do care. I'm just saying I don't care. I can pretend that it's okay. But these 
these little these little points can drive me nuts. Because I'm one of those people that looks at the destination, not the journey. The journey is not good. Destination is great. You can sit back and look at it. Hold it up to the light and see the translucency and go, ooh, yes. Looking at translucency is so much better than trying to pressure flake with a, another piece of antler backing you up because you can't get a good grip on it. It does have to be sharp. I gotta make sure it's even though you might not be able to see it on video, I do want to keep these sharp. At least most of the time. And the average was one centimeter wide, so I'm you know I don't have to be exact. I can be a little bit more. And that might not even be the average. It just seemed that way. With the pictures I was looking at. Okay, so the, uh, the bases are notched. Usually with a good pronounced, a good pronounced point at the tip of that notch. In many cases, not all cases. But I'm going to I'm going to try to get mine pointy at the top of that notch. Now, how do you get that point with a abo tool? Heck if I know. Super Duper Antler. I think I've mentioned the Super Duper Antlers in a different video. Yeah, I'm going to put a double notch. Some of these had double notches, so here you go. Why? I don't know. Two notches are better than one. Well, of course they were using that for hafting, right? I mean, they were passing those wraps through those notches, aren't they? No, not necessarily. I've seen them mounted with glue that look just like this. In the Southwest, this is very similar to some of the Southwest types. Simply mounted with glue and that's it. Why do they put notches? I don't know. Superstition, maybe. Maybe it's to thin it out, help, because it can thin it out. When you do that, you can... Last chance for pressure flakes... Put some notches in. Those did run into that cortex a little bit. So that may be a reason, and the notch in the base could be the reason to thin it out too. Who knows? Okay, so there you go. Nice and translucent. Colorful chert. And I think it's within range. Reasonable range. It's a little bit wider than a centimeter. 
a little bit longer, but I'll use this as a pattern for the next ones. It's a nice little project. Let's see if it fits the four shaft. Yeah, it's not too bad. It did get down to a reasonable thickness. Yeah, I think that would work. It doesn't go all the way to the bottom, but it's it's reasonable. Yeah. So that's not too bad. I can see that. Nice translucency. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to get the thumbnail on this one. Okay.